How's it going everybody? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and before we get started if you could hit like and subscribe and we will get into this. So today we're going to tie a diving caddis. And so as we get into it here in the vise we've got the fire hole and this is the 523 size 12 and for the bead got the spawn football bead in silver size 7 millimeter because we do want this guy to get down pretty quickly. So just so that we can secure that bead placement, let's get some wire wraps. And for the wire here, I've got some non-lead .020. I'm just going to give it a few wraps there, nothing crazy. You know, the bead is going to do its job as far as getting this fly down, so we don't need a lot of extra weight. It's just we do need that bead to sit where we want it. And for that, we'll use some of this weighted wire. So once you've got that front trimmed and rounded, do the same thing on the back. And just round that cut edge over. Like so. And hopefully that will prevent us from breaking our thread as soon as we start. And then just push that wire right up in, inside that bead there. And we can start our thread. So thread, I've got some Uni 6 aught, and this is Camel. And this is a really pretty simple fly. Uh, this is odd to tie a dry fly that's going to sink for you right away. But the reason we do that is caddis and a few other flies are known for being ovipositors. And so an ovipositor is a bug that's going to swim down to the bottom of the, the stream bed and deposit its eggs on the stream bed or in the stream bed even. And so to do that, they've really got to hit the water as fast as they can, flying downward at it. And once they do that, then they, they zip down to the bottom, swimming through the current and everything else, try to grab on and hold on to the bottom, and then lay their eggs there. So it's quite, quite the adventure. So for our egg sack here, I've got some brassy wire and just like everything else that we do I'm going to butt that wire up here to the back of our weighted wire wraps so that I maintain an even underbody and I know it might seem just a little silly considering we're throwing a dry fly underneath the surface here to be attacked and, and chewed on but cleanliness counts all right so once we've got that wire tied in you notice I've gone down the curve so all we're going to do now is wrap that guy back up and try to get some, some tighter wraps here. If you miss a wrap, please, by all means, don't fret, don't cry. This is just a slight hint of a trigger that's going to mimic the color of that egg sac that that caddis would be carrying as she plunges through the water. All right, let's see how we're looking here. Not too great, but not terrible. Call it good. There we go. I'm going to tie it off right like so. And four good wraps there on top, a couple in the front. And let's remove this wire. Nothing to it. Just crimp that little cut edge down with your thumbnail like so and you can continue wrapping it down. Nothing to it so far. All right, so our next element here is some medium wire from Ultra Wire. This is, of course, silver, and we are going to tie that in once again so that it meets up with the back portion of those weighted wire wraps, and then simply tie down all the way to where that green wire is. And now, one last step before we get too crazy here. I do have some Loon, and this is their clear fly finish resin in thin. And so I'm going to just cover those chartreuse wire wraps like so. Let it kind of seep in there, tap it a couple times. And once you've got full coverage, all those wires are protected now with a little layer of resin. Just come in with the torch. Go ahead and light that up. Cure it. 
And once it's cured, we can continue tying this fly without having to worry about any of that resin getting into our, our body material. All right. So let's bring that wire back once again. And so for the body of this caddis, I've got some dubbing here. And this is Pete's Shrimp Peach. And this is Spawn Semi Seal. And the reason I'm going with this is I'm, I'm trying to mimic a little bit of a creamy body. And this has just some subtle hints of that orange so that it'll work for, you know, the October caddis. It'll work for all that. And the cool thing is you could use pretty much any color that you really are into and it's still going to work. This fly is based on a pattern that the fish understand and that being that that, that caddis fly has, excuse me, don't mean to hit the camera there, has got to get all the way down to the bottom and so they know, hey, this thing's vulnerable. Real quick, I'm going to pull that wire up and make sure I get one full wrap of dubbing behind that. And I'm just gonna thin that out just a touch. And then we'll continue and we're gonna wrap all the way forward to where we started this, which is right behind the bead. Just a little bit more dub. And I'm not worried so much about a very even, neat profile on this body, because we're just gonna jam this wire through it. What we're looking for here is to make the strongest possible fly we can. So. Now I've got that ribbing wire, so I will just simply make evenly spaced wraps here all the way up the body so that as this gets chewed on by the trout, well, it's not going to fall apart too quickly. And that's important because we do want to catch more than one fish on this guy. All right. So from here, simply tie off that wire. And at this point, you have a pretty generic, just nippy looking bug and it would probably fish just fine as as where it's at right now but that's not what we're going for today i'm going to crimp that down and cover it with a few red thread wraps there all right so now i do have a little bit of bleached elk hair here and a stacker and so all i'm going to do now is treat this like a traditional and tie it right on top so that the hairs just extend past the body there and almost line up with that egg sac. And so I'll reverse that and put it in my left hand or off hand for tying. And then a couple good solid wraps here. And when it's all finished, I'm gonna have about nine or 10 wraps going back, pull that hair up and voila, we've got a wing. So if you can keep all those fibers separated, that's the tricky part. Just try to maintain a little bit of a neck there. And once you've got that, go ahead and crank some more down and get up toward the front of the bead. Pull these butt sections back, a couple wraps in front of those, and now we're ready to remove these. The nice thing about this is we're looking at where that bead sits and we're just gonna kind of follow right up the line there cut slightly over the eye back toward itself and now we have that profile of of that caddis head that we all know so well and a nice distinguished neck spot between the body and the head all very key on tricking these little trout all right so now we've got that where we want it a couple whip finishes here and we are good to go super simple fly but man, does it get the job done. So if, if you're just starting out and you're, you're struggling with getting your hair wings to sit just properly and all that, my suggestion is by all means, tie this version with a diving caddis because if your wing's not perfect, it doesn't matter at this point. This thing is just plunging through the, the surface of the, the water. You want it to get down to the bottom and that's what fish will recognize. So now I'm just gonna throw some loon. And this is hard head clear for the resin here. And just make sure you get all those thread wraps very saturated so that you can catch many, many, many fish on this, this little fly. And there we have it, folks. A diving caddis 
tie it on to 523 from fire hole. This thing will get down through the water column to the bottom where a regular caddis would definitely deposit their eggs. Hope you guys enjoy this. Please tie it up. If you have any comments, leave them below and we'll be sure to address them. And as always, please hit like and subscribe and we will see you on the water.